Mo has purchased Google stock. We're going to tell you why he liked it and bought it this price and why we like the company. But remember, just because somebody on the internet buys a company does not mean you should. You need to understand your process and if it fits your process and your valuation, then purchase it. So before we break down this company a little bit further, Mo, tell us high level. Why did you buy Google? I mean, first of all, this is the moat of the internet. Google and YouTube, biggest search engines. They have an increasing return on invested capital. And you might remember back to previous videos where we said maybe it was 80 to $100 a share. Well, I think that the business has almost caught up to the stock price. I think that you're starting to see unlock really good value right here. And that's kind of when I, why I went at this. And we're going to go through a few more reasons when we look at the, uh, when, on the metrics of this company. Yeah, I don't blame you at all. Okay, so let's go check out the company further. So guys, this is a company that even though the 52 week low is 89 bucks, it got as low as 86.37 back in December of 2022, which is pretty close to the bottom of that NASDAQ drop that year that fell almost 40%, right, Mo? Yep. We regretted not buying it. My buy price at that time was 85 bucks a share. Look how close it got, but I stuck to my process. I stuck to my process. I didn't get it. Do I regret that? Of course but this is part of following a process. You're not gonna win it every single time. But Google's a great company, guys. It owns the search world in terms of the internet. It's a verb, you Google it. <laughs> Market cap of 1.75 trillion against an enterprise value of 1.76. That difference of 10 billion is essentially their overall debt netting out the cash. Now, the one-year PE is 24, the five-year PE is 30. Seems a little pricey, right, Mo? Yeah, you but how do you say that. How do you feel about that? I'm not too concerned about it just because, I mean, it is Google. They dominate the internet. So I would, I'm willing to pay a premium for that. We always talk about this. You should be willing to pay a premium for great companies, right? The question is how much of a premium? I always give the example of Coca-Cola. When Warren Buffett started buying Coke in 1987, he paid 30 times earnings because of their moat. Now, our investment process has changed a lot over the last few years because of this channel, because of our software and community. We've changed our outlook of trying to buy smaller, better situations, short-term situations to buying great companies at better, at good prices. The reason being, I got lazier. I also mm -hmm. realized I have real estate. I have businesses. I have stocks. I'd rather buy companies that I can let run for a long time. My question to you is, Mo. What does the world look like in 10 years if a company like Google went away? It's not good out there. I'm probably not alive. <laughs> Neither are you. So to us, we're sitting there saying, this company's going to be around for a long time. And we love the fact that free ca $70 billion in free cash flow last year, an average of $54 billion in the last five years. So it's growing that free cash flow like crazy. Let's go check out the eight pillars here. Mo, we love seeing this, don't we? Look at yep, that. Just valuation metrics. That's what, that's what our X's are. Our two X's are the five-year PE and the five-year price of free cash flow are high. But remember, we showed you right here, net income of $57 billion over the last five years versus $74 last year. Five-year free cash flow of $54 billion versus $70 billion last year. So it's growing. So it's going to make this number a lot worse than it probably actually is, right? right. So you got to remember that. That's why these eight pillars are used to tell a story, not to make a decision. Okay, a guy like Warren Buffett might sit there and look at this company and say, it's eight pillars for me because I don't care about these really high multiples. Yep, now, that's actually a good exactly. question. Why doesn't Warren Buffett look at Google? That is a good question. When, we, when I was looking at this 13F, I was like, why is there no Google in there? Because well, if there is Google, it was a very small portion. I just can't remember. You look at his theory behind Apple and he says, and I love his comment. He goes, listen, if you tell somebody, give up your car for a year or give up your iPhone a year for a year, which one are you giving up? I'm giving up my car. I think a lot of people would give up their car. Majority are. Majority would. Why? Because I can still use Uber. I can still do everything. I mean, the, the, the phone has become attached to our life, right? But with Google, I mean, yes, there are other alternatives, but Google owns the top two search engines on the internet. What are they? Google.com. And then another one that you might not have heard of, YouTube.com. Guys, Google owns YouTube. And YouTube is the second biggest search engine there on the internet. Why? Because anytime you want to learn something, what do you do? You go to YouTube go or, you, or you go to Google and it gives you a video to go to on YouTube. Absolutely. Yep. You know, it's funny, Mo, whenever I buy something for the house, like something to be put together or some sort of device, Lisa mm -hmm. will say, hey, do you want to keep the, uh, the, the, the manual? I go, no. 
Why? Because I'll just go to Google or YouTube and figure out anything that I need to do to figure it out. That's it. Absolutely. We are incredibly reliant on Google and YouTube. Absolutely. And it's a sticky situation. It's a sticky, I mean, to sit there and all of a sudden go duck, duck, go or Yahoo. In fact, I get annoyed. I get annoyed when sometimes I find that Yahoo became the search engine on my, on my, uh, on my, on my Chrome. I'm like, how the hell did this happen? And I go back immediately and change it. Bing isn't bad, but you know, there was a time I heard this from somebody, a tech person I knew. They said back in the day when Bing was trying to compete with Google, they actually would just take somebody's Bing search and just go to Google in the back end and give up the Google searches. And how did no Google, f- this is what he told me. He said, how did Google figure this out? They had inklings that was happening. So they made some random sites that only appeared in a Google search that weren't actually out on the internet. And they went to Bing typed in like some search and that would pop up. So it wasn't wow. even pod that that's what I heard back in the day. I don't know if that's true or not. And I'd love if anybody can verify that, put that in the comments. Cause I thought that was brilliant. First off of Bing and also brilliant yeah. of Google. And I see Tim right there laughing about it. Cause it's true. It, it's, it it's incredible. amazing. Okay. So let's check out what analyst estimates are saying about the googly moogly. All right. So analyst estimates, Estimated to make almost seven dollars per share this year, growing to thirteen fourteen in the in the next three or four years. Look at this growth rate, Mo. 16, 15, 16, 16, 23 percent. This is why you pay the premium for Google. This is one mm-hmm. of the reasons why, by the way. Fast yep. growing earnings per share. If two companies are exactly the same, everything's exactly the same, profit everything, but one's gonna grow 20% a year, their earnings, the other one's gonna grow five percent. Which one should you pay more for? 100% you pay more money for the 20% growth. Let's go look at the revenue growth. Double digits, essentially. $350 yep. billion is estimated this year to 505. This is great, guys. And I think there's still a lot more potential in the world as it continues to grow. It keeps getting more and more connected with everybody. Yeah. Google is going to grow with that, right? We talked in a previous video how imagine the parts of the world that don't have stable internet yet that are not even searching yet. They don't even know yeah. what Google is in many cases. Does that mean they might come up with some other version? Sure. And Very by possible. the way, what's the name Google mean, Mo? What does it mean? It's a one with a hundred zeros behind it, but it's spelled incorrectly. But they changed it to G-O-O-G-L-E, which is probably easier and better. So you're learning mm-hmm. something new every day. If you're not going to learn uh, about the discounted cash flows and how to look at a company, at least you know <laughs> that. And now at dinner tonight, when you're trying to impress your wife or girlfriend or your side piece, you can sit there and say, hey, what, is Google, what does Google mean? And when they don't... And when they don't know, then all of a sudden you tell them and they're so amazed, they start ripping off their clothes and everything is going to get better for you. Okay, uh, so. This went x rated so fast. <laughs> so guys, like everything, we can love a company, but we got to separate the stock from the company. And they're totally different things. Now, the great news about this company is back when it was 150 plus a share two or three years ago, we said we were interested below 100 and people were making fun of us. Like, oh, that never happens. That never happens. It got to 80, 86 bucks. But every investment, the present value of all future cash flow. So we're going to use our stock analyzer tool right now to determine what is the right price to pay for Google. Now, I'm going to do an intrinsic value look. What does that mean? It basically says, if I were to market this thing, if I were to look at this company and say, what would I pay for this company in the market? What's it worth to me? Now, guys, we talk about the community. We talk about the software immensely. There are so many tools that we created. And we created the software literally because people watching our videos said, hey, how do I get access to that? So I sat there and said, listen, Mo and I made it for ourselves. We might as well make it for other people. So we created the software. We keep adding tools. Mo and I use this software every single day. Dalton uses it every single day. This is not something that we just sit there and say, let's give it to everybody else. So... If you're interested in joining the software, it's very simple. I wanna show you what you get with this. You get mobile app, everything you see here on your phone, full access, eight pillars, over 30 years of financial data, the stock analyzer tool, which you're gonna see next, exclusive content. Every week we do exclusive content just for our community members, for nobody else. You get access to Mo and I, we're in the community, you can tag us, we respond, etc. News, eight pillar portfolio. So you can apply the same metrics to an individual company as to your entire portfolio to see how it looks overall. Retirement calculator, which I still use every week, all the time. But most importantly, guys, 
the Everything Money community with like-minded investors. Over 16,000 people have signed up for the software since day one. There are thousands of active members every single day talking, sitting there saying, helping each other because being an investor can be a lonely road. If you're the only one around you who's talking this way, you can start having a lot of self-doubt. That's what makes our community so amazing. People there are there to support each other and also question each other. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? It's a safe place for investors to talk and feel the community. Unlike Twitter, where you can get blasted, et cetera. All of this, usually $49 a month. Guys, we have a special $7 for seven days at everythingmoney.com. So go there, check it out. Guys, look at our competitors. Look at all the things you get here. Look at the pricing, 199, 199, 35 bucks. We give you all this for only $7 for seven days at everythingmoney.com. So go check it out. But let's go sit there and take a look at Google in our stock analyzer tool. Now, Mo, I'm going to pull up the last time we did Google. For me, that was just a few weeks ago. Here's what I did. On a 10-year analysis, I did 5, 8, and 11% revenue growth. What'd you do? Okay. I did the same numbers. And look at this, by the way. The ROIC, return on invested capital, is increasing. Yep, increasing. That was a big piece of this for me. Yeah. So what they're saying here is, guys, this company is becoming more and more of a moat. It is protecting itself. It's getting a higher return on the money that's invested in the business, which can show you that they have a very good control over their business. Okay, profit margin. I did 22, 24, and 26. And same with free cash flow. And not going to lie, Mo. I actually think that might be a little low here, but either way, what'd you do? I have the same numbers in there. I think that we did this one together. I do agree. You could, maybe we should stretch it a little bit more. Well, and the reason being is, the reason to stretch it a little bit more is, guys, they have a over 50% gross margin. So they want to double their business tomorrow. For some reason, their business doubled tomorrow. Yeah. Their costs are not going to go that much higher. Their costs are not going to double. So their overall profit margin is going to increase much higher than what it is today. That's the argument to be made for that. So I'll put in 23, 26, and 29. You're going to do that. I'm going to stick on this one because in recessions, marketing tends to go down and biggest revenue generator for for, for Google is marketing dollars. All right, PE, I did 18, 22, and 25. So I did 20, 23, and 26 here. Yeah, I don't blame you. This is the hard part, guys. This is why you need this software because you need to put your own numbers in that make sense to you. And finally, like I said, I want a market return, intrinsic value. I put 9%, 9 or 10, because I'm sitting there saying, listen, what, do I, what am I going to make by buying Google? If I can make 9% buying Google, a company that's going to be around for a long time, that isn't bad. But this assumes no margin of safety. I hit the analyze button. Guys, no margin of safety. I have a low price of 106, high price of 250, middle price of 170. What do you have, Mo? So because I increased that profit margin, I put in a margin of safety of 10, 12, and 14%. Okay. Call 110 on the low side, 196 to 176 on the high side, 126 to 149 in the middle. And that's why you bought it. Yep, exactly. That worked for you. My, pro- my watch list price more. is 130. Guys, everythingmoney.com, $7 for seven days, full access. Take care.